What is going on, guys? Welcome to ID Podcast. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Is this the first show of 2019? No. I was going to say Happy New Year. Should have said it in the last one. (laughs) Well, we took a week off. Thanks for sticking around, guys. We had some traveling, so we had to take a little vacation off of work. Yeah. But we're back. But we have some great shows lined up for you, and we're... We are actually recording a bunch this week. We like to, if we can, batch them, you know, so like we record five in a day, save them up. Information's still great and new and amazing for you. But when our little three-year-old's at school, we got to get stuff done. Gotta get it done. <laughs> and uh, we just actually wrapped up an amazing interview with a return guest, uh, John Kim. He was back on episode one thirteen, And if you haven't listened to that, check it out and listen to today's show. And John is known as the angry therapist. And he has a unique story in that he was getting certified to be a therapist therapist. as he was going through a divorce. So he had a very unique perspective on these things. And he started writing and blogging about it um, throughout this process and um, had quite the following online. And he is the angry therapist, but he doesn't sound too angry no. to me. He's, uh, <laughs> I think he's just got the, the catchy, the name. And uh, we talk about a really interesting topic that a lot of you guys have requested, and that is, can we be friends with our exes or friends with the opposite sex? And the short answer is yes, but I won't give it all away. Um, <laughs> you have there, to listen. There are the times when the answer is no. So I'm going to leave that as a cliffhanger. You got to listen to today's show to find out all the reasons to do it the right way and if you should not be doing it in your particular situation. And as always, we have all the links uh, on the show notes page at idpodcast.com. And uh, if you guys check out John's first episode with us, which is episode 113, why it's critical to have respect in a relationship, there is a free download guide for that episode. So we'll link to we'll link to that in this show notes page. It's actually one of our most popular episodes. So check it out. Enjoy today's show. Today's show is brought to you by our online course, Spark My Relationship. Create more passion, improve your communication, and build a stronger, more intimate connection with your partner in less than 90 days. We've collaborated with 15 therapists and psychologists to bring you the strategies marriage therapists teach their clients. To unlock a special offer only for I Do Podcast listeners, visit sparkmyrelationship.com slash unlock. That's sparkmyrelationship.com slash unlock. Hey, John, thanks so much for joining us back on the show. Thank you for having me. John, we've given our listeners a little overview, told them about your professional history. We like to start the show with having you tell us and our listeners why you enjoy helping people improve their relationships? Um, Well, I uh, went through a divorce about 10 years ago, and um, I just got really passionate about helping other people um, just maneuver better in their relationships. And as I was going through a divorce, I was also becoming a therapist. And so I just started to write and blog about love and my revelations. And it's like I just started to attract people who wanted to – get some coaching or therapy with their relationship. So it kind of just happened organically. And I really believe in this idea that uh, whatever you go through in life, um, if you're able to come out the other end and learn from that, then you could actually use that in your story to help other people. So that's kind of what happened. It's a beautiful story. And and yeah, it's kind of fitting to, obviously you don't want to go through a divorce, but we have these moments in life where you experience something and, and, until you go through it, you don't realize like it's a thing. Like until your relationship suffers, you don't really realize like there's this whole thing around relationships and like doing them better. And, and obviously when you're experiencing it personally, it magnifies that can magnify it. And then the fact that, that you were training to be a therapist and Sarah and I have 
in a, in a way felt that way where we didn't think a lot about relationships until we started doing this podcast <laughs> and, and until we got married. And then it's like, man, right. we could do this way better. <laughs> and, yeah. and that's why we love. Yeah. Yeah. And we love yeah, it. You know, I, I, I think a lot of people um, see divorce or breakups as this huge tra- tragedy and the uh, sky is falling and they stamp failure or defective on their forehead. And it's not true, you know, um, relationships expire and it creates a lot of rich soil for you to um, re-examine and learn and what your contribution was to the expiration. Uh, My divorce was actually the best thing that's happened to me as far as repositioning me and sending me on my my hero's journey. Um, I was a total child. I was a man boy when I was married. And it was was the divorce that was the first domino in me, you know, actually kind of becoming a man, you know. Yeah, sometimes we need like something to shake us <laughs> out of the funk we've been in or or just to yeah. come into a realization like it seems that you have and and you mentioned the word journey and and that's what it is. It's it's a never-ending journey in this process and and we love being able to talk to people like yourselves and and get information for this journey and and today's topic is one that we've had a lot of listeners ask about it's one i've thought about in the past sarah and i have talked about personally in our relationship and that is being friends with the opposite sex when you're in a relationship. Yeah. So like if I had a, a female friend and then um, along those same lines, being friends with exes or former lovers and yeah. how we can navigate that. Cause it's kind of like something you, you see in a, in like a gossip type magazine, like headline, like it's, it's like one of these taboo topics. So I'm really interested. I have a personal take on it, but I'm, I'm really interested to hear your professional opinion. So let's Let's dive right in. Is it yeah, <laughs> we'll get straight um, to it? I've helped, what do you uh, think? I've processed and helped many people with this topic. Uh, it's it's um it's a big one. I, so here's the thing. I, I had this general rule that because uh, a lot of people want to be friends with their exes, and I get that. Um, but I think a lot of people are not honest with themselves or their intentions. I think you could be friends with your ex if you and whoever you're dating currently, and your ex and his or her, her partner. Uh, can actually go on a double date and actually have a great time. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I think at that level, um, without any kind of jealousy or you know um, uh, any intentions that are you know other that are not friendship related. So I think a lot of people want to be friends with their exes, and then but they don't realize they still have feelings for them or um, they're you know uh, keeping someone kind of in their back, back pocket, etc. And if you're not authentically being friends with someone. Um, and also, I think a lot of people after the relationship, they don't wait enough time. They think they could be friends with their ex, and it's only been you know a couple of weeks or maybe a couple of months, and that sticky comes back in, and you know it's not fair to whoever uh, they're dating or or to themselves because it ends up being like uh, uh, picking scabs and they don't heal. There is obviously a lot to unpack here, and I think you just gave us and our listeners a great framework just ask yourself like could you go on a double date with your ex and their partner and everyone have a good time because yeah it's it's like yeah i want to be friends and i'm just gonna go and hang out with them like or talk to them but it's it's my own thing and my partner's not involved and if they're in a relationship their partner's not involved and then it's like right it's like a lot of things in relationships. It's it's not open. It's not open communication. It's like I have this secret relationship, even if it's not romantic with someone that I used to be romantic with. And and like you said, there can be all different situations. Maybe there's still feelings there or, or you name it. But I think just asking yourself that question um, – We'll put all that BS aside and, and it'll be like, oh, well, um, no, Maybe not really. Not. <laughs> yeah, that won't be a good situation. And uh, yeah, it, it also like when you say you want to be friends with your ex, because there's different levels of that here. Do you want to be friendly and, 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 you know, catch up with them once every six months? Or do you want them to be an active friend in your life? And if you want them to be an active friend in your life, you have to, and if you, you want that to be an authentic friendship, you have to be okay with, uh, you know, say going on a double date and going bowling and seeing your ex holding hands or kissing her new partner and being happy for her. 
and most people <laughs> they're not there you know yet they want to be friends with them and it's like well how can you be friends with them if you're jealous or have you know all these other feelings um that that then it's not going to lay the soil for a uh, healthy authentic friendship how would you go about initiating this conversation with your partner um saying like hey i want to have a friendly relationship with my ex and I want it to be okay with you. And let's say that other person is not okay. How do you go about that dialogue? I think you have to be honest with your partner in uh, your feelings for your ex and where you're at. You know, I think if, um, if you just say, I want to be friends with my ex and that's it. And you put a period there, there's going to be a lot of questions. Right. But if you're like, Hey, listen, I have no feelings for my ex. Um, we are now friends. We've healed. We've moved on. This is why I want to be friends with her. I think, you know, et cetera. Uh, maybe we were friends before we got intimate and then your partner can understand and maybe, you know, support and encourage that. Um, but if you're just like, I want to be friends with my ex, you know, too bad. It's my life. Um, <laughs> it's probably not a good way to go in. So what if you do still have feelings for your ex? Like you're happy with your partner. You're super happy in the reason, I mean, relationships are hard is because they involve emotions and feelings and we can't control those yeah. a lot of the time. So let's say we, we love our current partner, but we still have like these feelings for our ex. How can we talk about that with our current partner? I think it's not fair. If you have feelings, um, even if they're, you know, residue feelings uh, with your ex, I think it's dangerous. I don't think it's fair to your partner if you're spending time with that person with your ex. Um, I think it goes back to the question, why? So basically, why do you want to be friends with your ex? If you, and you, and this is where you really have to be honest with yourself. If you want to be friends with your ex because she or he is an amazing person and they've always been a great friend and you miss them as a friend and, and, and you can, um, you know, you want to continue to build that. I think that's great. If you want to be friends with your ex because, you know, just in case whatever you're in now doesn't work out or you want to be friends with your ex because, um, you know, you're still attracted to them on a certain level, or maybe you seek their approval and validation, depending on the dynamic of the relationship. If, if there's something that you want from your ex, that you may, or maybe you're getting something from your ex that you're not getting from your current partner, all of those things are going to lead to a uh, dangerous territory because um, when you have that emotionally, you're setting yourself up for that to grow. And suddenly, um, you know, because you and your ex have history, uh, you guys could end up either getting emotionally attached again or physically, and um, it's not fair to whoever you're choosing to love. So can we talk to our current partner about it? So rather than reaching out to our ex and having you know a side relationship, even if it's just dialogue or emotional, um, how about just talking to our partner like, hey, I, I, I want you to know I'm, I'm – I still have feelings for this person and here's why, like, how does that conversation go or should it even happen? Yeah, I think that's a tough conversation. I don't think it's needed <laughs> because once you say you uh, still have feelings for someone else, it doesn't matter who it is. Um, you're basically saying I'm not, you know, 110 in this emotionally. I, I, I think there's something that you shouldn't tell your partner, but you should maybe talk to a therapist about, you know what I'm saying? Cause it's going to harm the relationship. And I think that's one of them. You know, if you still have emotions and feelings for your ex and you want to hang out with um, your ex, I don't think you want to tell your partner that they're like, I don't know how that conversation would be helpful in any way. Um, I think that's something you process with a therapist and figure stuff out on your own um, to make the decision either that you want your ex in your life or not. It seems like it's almost a red flag to me if somebody is telling their partner that they have feelings for their um, their ex yeah. that maybe they're not maybe they're not in the relationship they should be in. Right, or maybe they haven't um, had enough time to to really uh, you know close or heal or move on. You know, there's still residue there. Um, now, I do think that if you are already friends with your ex, like time has gone by and you guys are now friends, and then you meet someone right, then you have all the right to continue to be friends with your ex, if that makes sense. So, like, if if, if uh, you start dating someone after the friendship has already been established, then they're meeting you and, the, you know, your ex being in your life is already, they're meeting you as your life is already. So, you've mentioned these words uh, a couple times, and, and I want to point it out, and, and you said history, the shared history, 
and and time. So two of those things, I think it's important for people listening to realize, like you might be listening and you're like, I really just want to talk to my ex or I miss them. And, and you're recently broken up and, and for the right reasons and they're not the person for you. Sometimes like you just need time to distance yourself from uh, like the the ta- the very deep emotional attachments that that can take place and and it's not necessarily meaning like that that was a good relationship it's more that you were attached to the validation that they gave you or you were attached to uh, l- the place that you lived together and like there there's all these things and I had this experience that I I later realized with an ex and Sarah and I had talked about it that a lot of my interest in in or like i i guess attachment is the easiest word to use was because the time we spent together was in uh was traveling in another country and i later realized like mm-hmm. those experiences were tied in with the relationship that we had and it was almost more so that time in my life, I was young, I was the first time traveling in, in a new country, that that was like a big part of my attachment to that person. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. And, you know, here's the thing. A lot of our exes have created, you know, the deepest imprints, right? Uh, and our hearts were powdered snow before we met the one that, that you know, uh, blew our socks off. And it turned out that that relationship was codependent and a lot of the attachment. Um, a lot of the toxic, unhealthy relationships have the most sticky, right? They produce the most glue. And those, uh, it's it's hard to be friends with those exes because of the dynamic. You know what I'm saying? Unless two people have uh, changed so much that they're just completely different. And so the dynamic is different. If the dynamic is the same, you're going to fall into a, a comfort, almost like if, if they were a drug uh, and you are relapsing. And a lot of people are don't are uh, dismissive of the power of that, and so they're like, "Oh yeah, you know, it's okay. I'm gonna be friends with my ex." They start hanging out with their ex, and then suddenly they fall into that, you know, that attraction or the draw, and it may not even be love. You know, obviously, if it didn't work, there was a reason why. It's just that codependent, um, you know, animalistic maybe, and that draw is. It, then you end up falling into the same pattern, and maybe you leave your current partner for your ex. And then it's like nothing's changed and then you guys break up again. So that stuff happens all the time, too. It's so funny that you say that because I feel like among my girlfriends, the most toxic relationships are the ones that I see them struggling the hardest to get over. And it, it makes sense because, like you said, it's just captivating and harder for them to move on. And yeah, is there anything else you want to add on add on to that as to maybe tips for them? Yeah, yeah. I think um, if you, so I think you have to pass the breakers. I call it the breakers. Like, you know, in the ocean, you got to swim past the breakers to like reach calm waters. And if you're in a relationship and it's healthy and you're used to unhealthy, there's going to be a lot of turbulence. You're going to feel a lot of resistance. This doesn't feel familiar. You might have, um, you know, you might uh, mistake that for attraction. But if you swim past that and you actually start to really peel layers and start love, loving deeper, creating new definitions of love, uh, maybe your, you know, maybe your love experience becomes more spiritual. Then that deepening, once that is healthy, um, I think can eclipse anything that's unhealthy. But you have to, to swim there, right? I, I think it takes time. I think it takes a lot of. Um, getting to know someone on, uh, you know, on multi layers. Um, if you're just used to the initial attraction and, uh, cause today I really believe in the slow burn over the lightning in the bottle. And usually when you see someone and, and, you know, you just lose track of time and the guy, the person, uh, guy or, or girl blows you away and you're like, this is the one I feel like there's a lot of stuff happening underneath that's dysfunctional and crazy that you're not aware of. And that's where it's coming from, you know? It's interesting that you say that we've talked about it in the past, but I've definitely, and I think Sarah would agree that our relationship has been the slow burn. And, and in the beginning of our relationship, I, and even later on, I, I would sort of question that or, or 
wonder like, man, like why, not that this is bad, but like, why isn't it like, I can't breathe without you, Sarah. <laughs> like, and, and so much of that is colored by culture and, and what we see in movies and the fairy tale stuff. And, and there are relationships that are like that and, and, and do last forever. And that's a beautiful thing. But, uh, I think it's important to realize that it doesn't have to be that way. And, and like you said, like if it is the other way where it's just like super intense, there might be other things. It's not to say that always the case, but that you're just overlooking and, and a lot of things, um, because you know, our emotions are, are strong and, and the way that you guys met or, or the example I use of traveling in another country and it's like these new experiences and it's just, you know, it could be the a bad guy on a motorcycle and like, that's like thrilling. And, but the reality is, is he's just a bad guy and the motorcycle is not that <laughs> cool and he's a terrible <laughs> husband. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, it's an interesting point. Yeah. I think when you feel like, um, I can't live without you. I want to be with you every second of the day, all of that. I think that's young love. I think that comes from um, losing yourself in someone. And when you lose yourself in someone, that sounds, that feels amazing. I mean, it's like, it feels like cocaine. I mean, it, it, there's so much dopamine shooting into your brain. Um, and it's also very romantic and it's, um, you know, it's kind of what we've been programmed in movies and media, uh, what love feels like. Um, but that's actually not healthy love. And I think that comes from a place of, uh, feeling, uh, feeling holes in ourselves. I think it comes from maybe, um, something that smells familiar, uh, dysfunction from us growing up, like a lot of other things. And usually those relationships where it's like, so like, so, so many, so much fireworks where you, you just can't be away from the person or you physically get ill, like those kind of relationships, um, they don't have legs. They're not sustainable. I mean, I think that that's where, um, a lot of codependency control, jealousy and all of that you you know you get like two people coming together and kind of meshing into one person um and that may sound romantic um but it's actually completely unhealthy and and, and not sustainable so i just want to bring it back to to what you said at the at the beginning as far as being friends with your ex obviously there's a ton to unpack like you said family history our childhood attachments uh, and to think about with, with each individual case. But if you can ask yourself, cause if you're like, Oh, should I, should I not, you know, try to have this relationship with my ex, if you can go on a double date and everyone's cool with it on both sides and it's like a good thing and you're not lying to yourself and it really truly is, then that might be something to pursue. But I, I just think that's such sure. a valuable thought exercise. Um, or, and then maybe, and you think it's good and then put it into practice and then it's not good, then you'll know pretty fast, uh, in real life too. Yeah. You have to ask yourself if you want to be friends with your ex, why? If you want to be friends with your ex, because you guys have built a solid, authentic friendship and you guys no longer are romantic or, um, see each other in that way, but the friendship is solid. That's fair. And I think that's valuable. If you want to be friends with your ex, because, uh, you want a second chance or you want insurance or you want approval validation or, you know, there's something else happening or you feel like you, uh, you feel bad or whatever it is. Um, those are not reasons to be friends with anyone. If you're not going to be a good friend. Exactly. So and we could go on and on about this and all the different uh, angles and, and they're important, but I want to leave it there. And, and that's super valuable as far as being friends with your ex for us and our listeners to think about. Let's talk about being friends with the opposite sex. So let's say I, and Sarah and I have talked about this and I used to think that you couldn't do it because there's always like this sexual tension, but my views on that change, but I'd like to hear yours as, as far as if I, had a female friend that was just like a friend that I, I don't know, I, I met at the, uh, at the gym or wherever, you know, you meet friends. <laughs> um, is that, is that kosher? Is that something that can go on? But first we want to tell you about today's sponsors. Today's episode is sponsored by Babbel. It's the new year and you guys got resolutions, I'm sure maybe work out or Learn. Learn a new language. There you go. Put that <laughs> on there. And if you're going to do it, 
you want to get Babbel. Babbel is the number one selling language learning app in the world. We've told you this. Sarah is learning Spanish. And not only can you learn Spanish, which is super super helpful for us here in Costa Rica, but you can also learn French, Italian, German, Russian, Swedish, and more. There is a total of 14 languages that you can learn in Babbel. So you need to check them out. Their 10 to 15 minute lessons are available on the app or online, and they are designed to get you speaking confidently in your new language within weeks. So if this is your New Year's resolution, you can have it accomplished Within weeks, you'll be learning a new language. So you can try Babbel for free. Go to Babbel.com or download the app and try it for free. That's Babbel, B-A-B-B-E-L.com or download the app to try it for free. Babbel, speak a new language with confidence. Today's episode is also brought to you by Audible. What would it look like if we all listened more? I know (laughs) I could work on that. I think we all could. It'd be a better world (laughs) and there'd be a lot more happy relationships. Yes, there would. Listening to audiobooks inspires us, motivates us, even brings us closer in our relationships. And there are a lot of books we recommend on the show and a lot of them almost all come in audiobook form. And there's no better place to listen than Audible. Audible has the largest selection of audiobooks on the planet. And now Audible members get more than ever. Each month they get three titles of their choice, one audiobook, two Audible originals, and fitness programs they can't get anywhere else. There's never been a better time to experience Audible. Try it free for 30 days by visiting audible.com slash I do, or by texting I do to 500, 500. That's audible.com slash I do, or text I do to 500, 500. Yeah, of course. I mean, I don't think we should um, limit us having friends based on gender. I mean, that's, that's, I think that's ridiculous. Of course you can be friends with the opposite sex. Um, I think that we get something from, um, you know, our, our guy friends uh, that we don't from our female friends. And we get something from our female friends we get from our guy friends. Um, but just as people, I mean, gender aside, everyone's different. And we shouldn't not be friends with someone because um, they're opposite gender, you know. Um, again, it goes back to why. Why are you friends with this person? Are you friends with this person because... Um, because she's hot <laughs> and you're attracted to her, and then that's you know if you're if you are uh, if you are and you are uh, uh, choosing to love someone else, then that's going to bring you a lot of anxiety and temptation. Um, if you're friends with someone because <clears throat> you guys are great friends and, and you you know get some kind of something from this person, uh, and it's okay to get something from a friend that you don't um, with your partner. Like I think that's totally okay. It doesn't it doesn't make you um, it doesn't make your partner less or who you choose to love. Um, maybe you have a friend that's hilarious who's the opposite sex, um, but that doesn't mean that you want to sleep with that person or love that person. You just, you know, maybe share the same sense of humor and that's totally okay. Or maybe you guys have a, a, a common, uh, passion for motorcycles that you don't with your, say your wife. That's so what? That's okay. And your wife has to be okay with that. And your wife should also, uh, be able to have guy friends that she has some things in common with. And, but that doesn't mean she wants to sleep with them, you know? I think the key, as you alluded to, is to be honest with yourself. Like, are you, do I want to be friends with this woman because I like her personality or because I'm attracted to her? And, and it's, you know, it's funny. It's like we have this relationship with ourselves and we, I mean, think about that statement, lie to yourself. That's pretty like, (laughs) it's pretty interesting, but we do it all the time. And, uh, and that would be an example of like, oh yeah, I'm just, I really like her personality, but deep down it's like, you're, you're attracted and in deep down, you know that, but you're just choosing to ignore it or, or, um, you know, lie to yourself about it. Yeah. And here's the other thing. Um, and I, I think this is something that a lot of people have struggled hearing. Um, you are going to be attracted to other people besides the person you choose to love. 
Like there's no way around that. There's billions of people on this planet. Um, you're going to be attracted. It doesn't mean you're going to fall in love, but you're going to see attractive qualities, uh, whether it's aesthetics or humor or, you know, someone's drive or whatever, uh, just throughout the day, you know, you can just run into someone at Starbucks and think like, oh, wow, she's very attractive or she has a nice smile. Uh, he has a nice butt, whatever. And I think that's, that's being human. And, the, and I don't think that we should, um, ignore that or suppress it or deny it because when you do, it just amplifies it. Right. And I think there's a lot of people walking around with guilt or shame because they have found other people attracted that they, that, that, you know, is not their girlfriend or wife. Um, that's very different than choosing to love someone. So, you know, love, loving someone is a choice. And as you uh, maneuver through the world, you're going to be attracted to uh, many people. I love that you say that because so often when you think of attraction, you think of physically and not really the other attributes that people can bring to the table, like you said, humor or a certain type of personality. Um, so sure. I love that you explain that because it, it really can, I think, make people look at it differently. Like when they become friends with somebody of the opposite sex, it may not be because they're physically attracted to them. It could be they have a really great personality. Yeah. Or they're funny. Or they, whatever, you know, it's, it's, it's about admiring and appreciating, um, someone noticing their gifts. Right. And, and, and it, and it doesn't matter if you're noticing their ass or noticing their, uh, passion for something. Um, it's okay. It doesn't mean that you want to build a life with that person. It just means that you're going around the world awake and noticing. And that it's like, that's not going to stop. And also you have to be okay with your partner being attracted to people too, or finding people attractive. Um, and if you're not, you're going to have a lot of anxiety in all your relationships. You're going to create, you're going to create torture and suffering for yourself. So how do you go about hanging out with the other, the person of the opposite sex? Like, how do you talk about that with your partner? How do you schedule the time? Like, how does that work? Well, for me, um, if I have if I have a, if I have a partner who won't allow me to have female friends, to me that's a red flag in the the part with the partner that I'm choosing to love. <laughs> to me, that's a sign of uh, insecurity, uh, control, jealousy, all of that stuff. It doesn't mean that it, that's a non negotiable, but then there's a the conversation there. You know, um, I think that uh, a you have to be first honest with yourself, but then you also have to be honest with your partner. You know, and and here's the thing: jealousy is okay. It's a feeling like anything else. It's the jealous behavior that's not okay. So we are also going to be jealous um, if we see our partner, uh, you know, I don't know, talking to some, you know, someone that we think is like uh, that we may be intimidated by or that has something that we don't, et cetera. And that feeling is, is temporary and that's okay. And I think it's okay to even talk to your partner about feeling jealous, um, not for them to do anything about it. You know, it's your own stuff. Uh, but it's a jealous behavior. So now if you start to be controlling or you tell your partner that, you know, she can't wear this or that, then that's, that stuff is toxic. That stuff is um, damaging. One of the, it's, it's a bigger, broader topic or idea is, and you alluded to it a little bit, is that we're human and we're going to be attracted to other people. And this is a bit uh, along the vein of open relationship and, or just not even open, but different, a different look on monogamy. And it seems to be more and more in the popular culture and, and with, yeah, it's a very hot topic right now. Yeah. And so, and to me, it fits into this conversation a bit, like everything we're saying is in the lens of a monogamous relationship and, and can we do this? And and it is interesting um, that this conversation is happening and people are trying different forms. It, you know, I think it's Dan Savage, monogamish. So different forms of monogamy where maybe that friend of the opposite sex is a friend and sometimes it's more than a friend romantically and and the lines get blurred so where do you sit on this and 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 how this fits into everything we're talking about yeah so monogamy is on trial right now 
there's a lot of conversations about this, and a lot of people are are, <laughs> are not um, accepting it because, and, and I know why, because monogamy is it, it's not a wiring thing. We're not born to be monogamous. Uh, monogamy was created by you know the structure, and it's um, if you if you challenge someone and tell them that um, that it's okay to not be monogamous, usually. It, it 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 collapses their whole house of cards, right? It collapses the uh, the, the picket fence. It collapses that whole image of um, happily ever after, um, and so people really hold on to it with two hands. Um, I think monogamy is a practice, right? I think it's a daily practice, uh, and I think that um, it's okay to talk about other um, other types of of uh, of, uh, of loving. You know other types of uh, relationships. So whether you're poly or open, I I think it's depending on what you what you like and what you want and what works for you. You know, um, but this stuff was never really talked about before in in society, but it's become um, a big topic today. I think partly because of our swipe culture, partly because um, we are actually starting to have more non negotiables. We are actually listening to ourselves. Uh, we are now asking different questions. We're curious about what some other um, ways of loving someone looks like. So, uh, in in all those conversations, I, I think are good. You know, I don't think they're things to be afraid of. You just have to know what you want and what works for you. Uh, and also, what works for you may be different five years from now, and that's okay too. It's an interesting area of uh, conversation and research, and and. Um... I guess real world examples for for Sarah and I and I read uh it's I guess it's more kind of the bible of open relationships it seems like is sex at dawn um by Chris Ryan which is like an anthropological look uh at that looking at other primates and human history um and how it led us to like you said the cultural construct of monogamy and what is our true nature and and it's interesting to me from that perspective because uh i like to examine a lot of things in in my life and in our life and try not to look at what everyone else is doing and and more because society doesn't always get it right with a lot of things. And uh, this is an example of, I'm not saying I know what the answer is, but it's interesting to think about. And what I would, and I'm not advocating for um, either or really, but having an open mind, because it really blew my mind was like, oh, there's another way to have a relationship and, and <laughs> it, because you don't even right. think of that because that's not socially acceptable. It's not even known. And now with podcasts and, and obviously the internet and these, these ideas and are being more widely disseminated and, and talked about. Um, and it's something that, uh, Sarah and I have talked about quite a bit and want to talk about and explore, uh, more on the show, uh, because I think it is interesting. And if you look at a divorce rate, that's like, whatever it is, it's 50% or, or over a uh, 50%. If something, if a rocket, if your plane crashes 50% of the time, you might be like, uh, oh, maybe this is not, we're doing something wrong here, or maybe there's a better way to fly. Um, and that's kind of the way I look at it, not even from personal experience, but just looking at those numbers of like, wait, and I come from a divorce, you know, uh, parents that were divorced. So I have that personal experience, but like, yeah, this is not working 50% of the time. Maybe I don't, I'm not saying I know the alternative, but maybe we need to like explore different ways to do this. Yeah. Yeah. And I, um, you know, there's also, um, religion upbringing. There's a lot of things that, um, really stamp monogamy as, uh, the only way to love in our heads. Right. And, um, I'm currently monogamous, and uh, it, it's something that, that works for me now, but I don't know what, what, how, what I'm going to be five years from now. And I think just kind of being open to all forms, um, just because it brings up a lot in you and it challenges you and it stretches you, um, is always a good thing because it could also widen your lenses and it could give you new definitions on what love can be. Exactly. And that's kind of one, why I wanted to bring that up. And because it does fit into the topic of what we're saying is is – get outside of of your belief system that that you know and I'm not saying this critically cuz I've been guilty of it I think we all have of like oh you're not supposed to be friends with your ex like that's like a common sort of 
theme in relation. Like, no, you don't talk to your ex or you can't have a friend with the, you know, of the opposite sex and, or you, you can't have a, an open relationship. These are been drilled into our heads. And and I think if you can just have, like you said, an open mind, it's going to make it easier for you to explore that with your partner of like, Oh yeah. Like you can have a, a female friend that you like hanging out with. And it's not that you love me less or want to be with them. Um, I think that's a, and, and that goes with everything in life, relationships, activities, trying new things, like to have that open mind, but it takes practice. Yeah. I mean, look how far we've come with, I mean, you know, maybe like even in the fifties, uh, the idea of even, uh, bringing sex toys into the room, you know, <laughs> or, uh, all of that. And now that's like, that's nothing. And I think with, um, different ways of loving people, open relationships, monogamy, uh, polygamy, all of that. I think, you know, five, six years from now, it's, it's going to be more of a general conversation and less of like this, um, you know, less stigma and less like this, this weird thing. I think there's going to be less judgment. Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. I think it's already changing. And, and, and that's why I love doing this podcast. And that's what opened it up. Uh, the book Sex at Dawn, I found out, I was listening to, I think, uh, a podcast and, and heard about it. And, and this was like three years ago. And I'm, I feel like I'm a very open-minded person. I, I like to, but I, I didn't really even know open relationships were a thing. And, and it was like, oh, it's, it's in the same way that like, if I never knew that surfing was an activity and then all of a sudden I saw like right. people ride waves in the ocean. Oh my goodness. Like, what is that all about? And, you know, and I want to, I want to see in like these new, new ways to, to experience life. And it's interesting. It doesn't mean you have to do it, but it's interesting to explore and, and learn about. And, and it it can help you in your monogamous relationship by learning more about, you know, you think you got to be good with one partner. Imagine the work that it takes to have multiple partners and, and the communication and, and everything that goes into that. So uh, it's an interesting uh, dialogue that we'll have to have you on for a uh, part two and, and we can just dive into that. Yeah, for sure. I mean, at the end of the day, you're on this life one time. I mean, you may, depending on your beliefs, you may you you may continue. Uh, but in this body, you're in on, on this planet one time. Um, live an honest life, and what that means to you is going to mean, um, you know, something different. Uh, well, to you than than other people, and to just always be honest with yourself. And that's not only with sexuality and relationships, but you know, your definition of success and all of that stuff. So. Um, and I think people are more honest today than ever before, which is exciting. Yeah. Yeah. And it's so true, uh, what you just said right there. And it's a great way for us to wrap up and for our listeners to take home and think about when thinking about being friends with an ex or someone of the opposite sex, sex or anything in their life. So John, why don't we wrap up by having you tell our listeners where they can find you online, tell us about your new book, and then we'll say goodbye. For sure. Uh, I have a new book called I Used to Be a Miserable Fuck, <laughs> and Every Man's Guide to a Meaningful Life. Um, it documents my journey from being miserable to now being um, a lot less miserable. Um, but of course, there's uh, you know a lot of revelations and 66 do's and don'ts for men. It's written for men, but it's actually for women, too. Um, a lot of women are enjoying it because it kind of sets new standards and, and areas to look at, like even what we're talking about today about, you know, uh, can you be friends with your ex, etc. So I really bring it to street level and talk about all that. Um, and you can find me. On, I actually have my own podcast. It's about 10 minutes. It's super fun. It's stuff that I've in shot class called the Angry Therapist Podcast, and it's on, you know, Spotify and iTunes and all that. And then uh, across social media, just at the Angry Therapist, so Instagram, et cetera. Excellent. We'll have the link to your podcast, uh, your book, and uh, your past episode that you did with us uh, about a year ago on your show notes page on our website at idopodcast.com. And again, thank you so much for joining us back on the show, John. Yeah, and thank you for um, creating this kind of conversation and dialogue. And, um, you know, everything starts with the conversation. So I applaud you guys for continuing to talk about all of these things. Hi, guys. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. As always, all the links are in the show notes page, as well as on the podcast description. And while you're on our website, we encourage you guys to check out our 14-day happy couple challenge. 
We send you an email for 14 days with simple, doable challenges to help strengthen and improve your relationship. And on our website, we also have a bunch of free resources for your relationship. So we encourage you to check those out. Uh, We also have our love tribe on Facebook. Uh, We encourage you guys to join the tribe and uh, be there for support for each other. If you have questions or just need some relationship advice, we are all here for each other. Um, The group has grown to almost a thousand people um, and we love it. So we hope you guys join that. You can go to Facebook, Love Tribe Fam, and you'll find us right there. And if you are interested in learning more about our flagship course, Spark My Relationship, we hope you guys check it out. We have a special offer that is only for podcast listeners. So you can go to sparkmyrelationship.com slash unlock and you can unlock that special offer and learn more as always thank you guys so much and we'll see you next week